Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, Pablo, if you don't know already. Uh, today I'm going to be interviewing Ash from New Kids on the Blockchain. Uh, Ash, thank you for coming. <laughs> nice to see you again. It's been a while actually since I've caught up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been a while. Last time we saw each other was in crypto poker, poker wasn't it? <laughs> It was indeed. You were running around and yeah, I wasn't doing very well in that one, but I aim to come back and come back strong at the next one. Nice, nice. <laughs> Best of luck next time. <laughs> All right, Ash. Uh, so I'm doing this series, this interview series, as we, as we were talking before, um, about like the, the whole sp crypto space, the whole blockchain uh, technology, what's exciting about it and everything. And I thought that interviewing you, since you do basically the same thing off and on with many people, uh, that would be not only uh, good content for our channel, but also a learning experience for myself and for our community. So um, I would like to know, first of all, can you talk a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm traditionally a kind of filmmaker and documentary maker. So I've been in TV and film production for over 20 years and done a number of feature documentaries and TV documentaries and other things. And I got really interested in blockchain in sort of 2016. I tried to get into it a lot earlier. I think in like 2013, I tried to buy Bitcoin, but it was so ridiculously hard. I remember being sat down in the pub with friends of ours trying to buy Bitcoin. I can't remember what for, but we just, it was beyond us just, we were pretty technically savvy, but we just didn't have a clue. And then I just kept hearing about it, you know, 2013, 2014, 2015, and then 2016, I got really interested in it. And as we were documentary filmmakers, we started attending events. And Lisa, my partner, was like, we've got to start filming this. This is like, this is potentially the biggest thing of, you know, certainly our generation, if not many generations. So we were quite lucky to be in the right place at the right time. We started filming at the Dash conference and, you know, we got invited to a lot of other things. And there begun a kind of what's been so far three year journey of trying to chronicle what's happening in blockchain and crypto space. But from the inside out, as opposed to like Netflix or Sky or somebody looking in and going, oh, look at this crazy little thing. We're like inside looking out and kind of being on this journey for the whole time. So we've seen the 2017 incredible boom. We've seen the 2018 despicable bust. And we've seen, obviously, 2019 now, we're starting to, you know, kind of hopefully come out of this terrible fog that we've been in. And we're starting to see technology develop. A lot of the projects that have been kind of building, starting to come through, mainstream adoption, you know, heading towards it and starting to see regulation starting to settle down, as opposed to that crazy Wild West that it was in 2017, where anybody could just write three or four lines on the back of a, you know, piece of paper, throw up a space age looking website and raise 20 million quid. So it's, um, it's been interesting. And we, you know, we've now amassed, I think we're up to like 500 hours of material. So we're sat in wow. edit weeks trying to tell this story. And the problem is, it's like trying to make a jigsaw puzzle without the box, because the story's not over yet. So most documentaries like this, you make afterwards, like the Enron story or any of those, it happened, you go back and you review what happened. We're trying to make this documentary as it's happening. So we're constantly zigzagging and going through. And mm. so as part of this journey, everybody said you should start a YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, I had no intention of becoming a YouTuber or starting a YouTube channel, but especially I'm kind of much older than that whole generation. But <laughs> we, uh, we realized that content in cryptocurrency, you can't wait for three years to release content. You know, it, it moves yeah. 100 miles an hour and things, you know, start moving so quickly that we started doing weekly content then we started doing a weekly show and before we knew it we've been interviewing all the kind of leading people of the space you know chatting to people as varied as roger ver and john mcafee and you know all sorts of interesting kind of crazy characters from space uh found myself tweeting with the winkle by the other day which was quite an interesting uh, kind of scenario after reading their latest book and um yeah just trying to get to the point where this documentary, we're going to take a snapshot in time and look at 2017, 2018, and 2019, and then stop. Otherwise, we'll be making this documentary until we're the much older kids on the blockchain than I already am. And I'm not exactly <laughs> a new kid as it is. So that's kind of my potted history for you. Right, right. Awesome. Um, so about a little bit about the channel then. Because uh, you, do, you do, the type of content that you do is like a weekly roundup of the crypto world, right? We wanted to do like a magazine style show. So again, 
because we're from the TV world, I didn't want to do another, you know, in my basement webcam show. We've got yeah. quite a high production value set up and we're trying to make it more of a like TV style show that focuses on kind of events, news, projects, blockchain banter, where we bring people in and have a chat, you know, from, from Luminaries in the space. Um, you know, blockchain related kit and equipment or, you know, all different, all different things and giveaways and prizes because everybody likes free stuff. So we also <laughs> have uh, free giveaways and stuff as well. And trying to make it a kind of entertaining half an hour show that's informative, but we're not deep dive technical people. There's really good technical people out there on the, you know, on YouTube that do this stuff. We're, we're more looking at the technology from a broader perspective uh, and interview led kind of narrative as opposed to, you know, too much technical deep dive or this coin's going to the moon. You know, there's there's enough of those channels out there already, I think. This, this is interesting because in my last interview with Savannah, we uh, brushed upon this, um, that people are usually much more concerned about the value of a token or a coin instead of like looking towards like the, the technological um, innovation that is bringing. Uh, what, what's your view on this subject? I think we, we've done a lot of kind of fairly intense audience review stuff. And it seems right. to me that the audience categories fall broadly into people who want to make money out of crypto. Now, that's by far the biggest piece of the, uh, you know, of the pie. Mm -hmm. um, people who are really interested in the technology, um, the libertarian kind of cypherpunk, you know, kind of brigade. Mm -hmm. um, and people that are just kind of dipping their toe in and, uh, you know, and trying to find out a little bit more about it. But certainly for us, if we're doing commentary about a potential coin about to drop, the viewing figures will be a third of what they are if we're doing a video about the fact that Litecoin has gone up 330% in the last year. Right. So by virtue of that, you know, people are looking to, people are governed by their wallets, I think. And I think there is a lot less of the speculative kind of crowd than there was in 2017. But people are still trying to you know, speculate on this stuff and make money. Um, we're interested in the tech. Uh, I mean, would we like to make some money? Yeah, sure, absolutely. But I'm, I'm in this for the long term. Uh, and I think a lot of the people that were just in it for a quick buck have been washed out of the market. You mentioned last time we saw each other, uh, you mentioned that you went to uh, the U.S., and that many people approached you in Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, saying about like, oh, it's a shame this Bitcoin thing didn't work out. So I was wearing one of my favorite Bitcoin hoodies, my bright red Bitcoin hoodie with a logo like this on it. And people were literally <laughs> stopping me on the strip and going, hey, yeah, that whole Bitcoin thing didn't work out right. You know, oh, shame about Bitcoin, this kind of stuff. And every time I spoke to them, I was like, well, actually, no, if you do a bit of research on it, it absolutely isn't. Um, but the general consensus from the, the gambling crowd in Vegas was that Bitcoin had been and gone. Uh, right. This, to be fair, was probably at the time when it was around $3,800, though. So it was at the point where it had been kicked in the stomach and, you know, beaten up fairly severely. Mm. So, um, but the, the, the general perception was that, you know, it was a done deal. Do, do you think that that's maybe because, like, the, the mainstream media paints that picture or is just because... Misconception. I think it's misconception because the mainstream media paints that picture. Right. I think a lot of the people that, that were talking to me, you know, they don't read the, you know, the crypto blogs. And in the morning, pretty much the first hour of my day is consuming every piece of crypto news there is. Right. So I sit down with a massive pot of coffee and I have about 20 different news sources that I just kind of pile through to try and, you know. So most people, all they'll read is that kind of, headline that comes into the mainstream news, which is kind of like Bitcoin over again. Um, but you've seen recently the mainstream news has been very positive about, um, you know, about Bitcoin. We've been covering this in in the last couple of shows. You've had Bloomberg saying how Litecoin, you know, is, is one of the things to invest in. You've had uh, CNN Fast Money. The guy was quoted on the show as going, sell everything, sell your wife, sell your children, buy Litecoin. Uh, and he literally said it on the, you know, on the actual show. And we actually put a clip in. And so the mainstream media is, again, starting to take interest. And I think that means we're going to start seeing more retail investment again, whether or not a lot of people who got burnt in early 2018 will be back to test the water again or whether it will be, a, you know, kind of existing investors or new people 
is yet to be seen. But I don't think we've got that huge amount of ICO money that's going to come flooding in like we had last time. Mm. So I think if the market cap's going to increase significantly, mm. it's going to be coming from new potentially, you know, from um, regulated investors or um, or different, you know, different methods. Segwaying somewhat somehow into pillar. <laughs> Handbrake, handbrake turn into Pillar. You've been, you've been following Pillar and you've been like, uh, shall we say, honorary Pillarista since uh, longer than I have. Uh, you've been around doing videos with Pillar before I came in. Um, so um, what got you interested in the, in the project? First of all, I was very interested in meeting up with David Siegel. Right. So we interviewed him for the documentary in, ooh, I want to say late 2017. Uh, no, sorry, mid-2017, mm. uh, around the time before, I think just before or just after Pillar's ICO. Um, and the more I got to learn about Pillar, you know, the more I was interested in it. I've been a huge kind of advocate of data privacy. Um, and as a result of it, I met the whole team there and, you know, started spending time doing some filming um, and said, look, I'd love to feature Pillar's story in our documentary as, you know, one of the case studies of a of an emerging company. Mm -hmm. so, and that's kind of what I've been doing. So I've kind of, you know, interviewed a number of key people over key times, traveled to various events, uh, went out to Lithuania with you guys last year for your big unconference out there, which was insane. Um, and, you know, just really interested to, to see where the journey leads. And you were mentioning before um, the, how hard it was to sort of like get into uh, Bitcoin or, or crypto in general in the early days, right? Um, and I, I compare it myself. I got into crypto last year, uh, around August. No, uh, around August 2017, I got into crypto when I started mining um, for Ethereum. So um, that was hard enough already, but I reckon it was way easier than you've faced before that. Um, and looking how easy it is to like, work with uh, what Pillar has created so far, which is like kind of like the foundation of the platform. Uh, would, you, would you say that that can help drive uh, people that are curious about it into the world of, of crypto? The, the Pillar wallet can help that, do you think? I think so. I mean, I think what, what, what we need is in America, they have a thing called Venmo. Right. Okay? Everybody uses Venmo. It's just basically like a money move, like a PayPal type thing, but it's very easy that you go for a meal with your buddies and everybody wants to kick in 20 bucks. Somebody pays and everybody just immediately Venmos them. And it's a really easy process. It needs to become as easy as that. And I've seen, you know, some of the videos you've been doing about, you know, making it easy to to send, I want to send money to Pablo, I just go Pablo send as opposed to X14 underscore 93 backslash, set, you know, <laughs> trying to remove those potential barriers. It's, it's getting easier crypto, but it's still just as easy and do something really bad with your, you know, you can one wrong slip of a key still and you can be seeing your money just disappear into a puff of smoke. Yeah. So I think while that risk still exists, it's going to prevent, you know, 95% of people wanting to go anywhere near it. Um, but as soon as it's easy to pick up your phone and look at who you want to send some crypto or money to, and also moving between fiat and crypto, because that's still not easy. You know, you've still got to have a Coinbase account and put some physical fiat in to convert it to crypto and move it. Yeah. Or you've got to, you know, one of the other exchanges. But if, for me, it's trying to tie up the whole thing so it becomes, you know, a lot easier to just, um, be moving money in and out of crypto to other people mm. and between fiat and crypto. Just uh, to, to wrap it up then, um, I would like to invite all of you to go to New Kids on Blockchain here on YouTube. Subscribe to their channel. They're amazing content every week. They do a weekly roundup of all the crypto news. So if you are new to crypto or if you're just very interested and don't have the time to go read it yourself, they sure do a very nice selection of the most important, most interesting news on crypto. I know I watch it all the time. Ash, thank you very much for your time. Absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, let's make sure we catch up soon, have a pint and uh, talk more crypto. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> See you then.